Yo, Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at gameplay from patch 1.14 and this is a massive patch because it essentially changes the entire meta of how PvP functions and how heavy attacks function within that meta because the heavy attack speed for so many different weapon classes just got increased which makes the heavy attack so much more viable. It's you know, useful for roll catches, it's useful for whiff punishes, and I think we're also going to find some new true combos for a whole bunch of different weapons as we have some more time with this patch. But for now, we're going to be focusing on some duels and invasions, and for every duel, I'm going to be changing up my weapon class and just trying to incorporate these heavy attacks while kind of talking about how I think this changes things. And then for the invasions, we'll also be just changing up our weapon class, you know, throughout the course of the invasion, just trying to really demonstrate all these heavy attack changes that are so much fun to use now. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into some of the duels. Oh, real quick, if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I really would appreciate it. I'm trying to hit 10K subs before the end of the year. And also we do have YouTube memberships now. So if you do want to join, if you have a little bit of extra money lying around and you'd like to support the channel, it's definitely an option but absolutely zero pressure um yeah so let's go ahead and jump into the duels all right so to start things off we're going to be running the two-handed nagakiba and that was a heavy attack that really was not very useful you couldn't do much with the heavy attack on the nagakiba it was just too slow and i think you could throw it out sometimes but you had to get such a good read on your opponent that it was not that useful so here we can see we just don't have priority yet but here look at that whiff punish we're able to get with the heavy attack we're actually able to let them finish their animation before they can roll out we can use the heavy attack to punish it and this is a great weapon for that because it has such nice range but these are the changes that we're going to be seeing we're going to be able to whiff punish with our heavy attack we're going to be able to potentially roll catch with our heavy attack, especially on longer weapons, and that is so, so nice. So another change is the increased damage to the hand-to-hand -hand arts weapons, and now that the heavy attack is buffed for this as well, we can see that just like a neutral heavy is actually viable. That was one attack that I never really used. I pretty much only would use the running heavy on the hand-to-hand, -hand and or the jumping heavy, both great, but the neutral heavy is now fantastic, and we can see it's even strong against something like a light greatsword, which really takes up a lot of space and has a lot of knockback so the fact that we're still able to get in is great we also can see that they're using the rolana talisman which now has a faster startup and does more damage so you can see how fast there the talisman took effect um, it was a little bit slow before so this is really nice next up we're going to be using the heavy attack on the great katana and there just see how fast that faint was normally i don't go for faints because they are kind of slow and predictable but that came out so much faster than normal um, so we didn't actually get any punishes with it, but just the fact that you can throw that out randomly is, is kind of interesting. Now, the only thing that I would say is, I wouldn't say problematic with the heavy attack on the Great Katana. Um, just one thing that I'll miss is that a neutral light attack into heavy attack was like kind of perfectly timed before this patch, where you could just kind of land that heavy attack as a roll catch if your opponent rolled out of stun from a neutral light attack. So. That's going to be different, but obviously the faster feint is really nice and just, you know, the faster heavy attack. Now, this was one I was super interested in, and we have a heavy attack on this weapon, the Sword Lance, that comes out, it's like 30% faster. So before, it, was, it wasn't it was that hard because you got hyper armor during your heavy attack, but now to get the true combo from the heavy attack into light attack with the Sword Lance is just... It's really nice, it feels good. So here we can see we're actually able to whiff punish with the heavy attack, just spacing it appropriately and getting the true combo. So Sword Lance I think is gonna be uh, pretty top tier and I'm so excited to play with it more. Now here we also have just the two-handed straight sword and obviously we're against a Colossal, but being able to get in and get out with a heavy attack is awesome. So here I just went for another attack I should not have mashed, but just being able to punish a Colossal sword attack with a heavy attack is, is really nice like that feels good and i think this really helps out the straight sword move set like now you can run power stance straight sword and actually incorporate heavy attacks into that move set which is is really interesting um two-handed halberd like 
obviously a, a great weapon to, to begin with. Halberd has just always been very strong. But having a heavy attack that comes out a little bit faster, like most of these things, like it, it's just nice and it, it catches your opponent off guard and you can really incorporate it in ways that you couldn't before. Also, note with Scattershot, it no longer does headshot damage. So that's a new change as well. Um, you're not able to get headshot, um, like the stun from that from either Scattershot and Spread Crossbow, I believe. So that was a very, very welcome change. Um, next, we're gonna be running a dagger and the heavy attack on the dagger has been sped up by one frame. So it was already very, very fast, essentially unreactable. And now the fact that you have, um, you know, just a dagger that comes out with an R2 just a little bit faster, guaranteed poise break is, is really cool. Um, I did want to see if it true comboed with an offhand great katana. I wasn't able to uh, really confirm that with the latency of this player, but it seemed like it did not. Uh, I'll have to check the frame data for that later, but just kind of interesting. Also, again, this player is running the Rolana's Talisman, so we are seeing their buff for their stance, um, Ash of War, just taking effect a little bit sooner. Um, and here we can just see how fast that heavy attack comes out. It's absolutely brutal. Um, and now this this is concerning. So the heavy attack on the Colossal Sword, plus the more forward momentum that it gets, it combos into Storm Stomp now, which is just, it feels so broken. So um, I, I felt bad for this one, but I needed to test it for science. So if you were this player, uh, thank you for your participation in our, our scientific endeavor here. But um, yeah, just Storm Stop comboing into a heavy attack. Totally normal for one of the highest damaging weapons in the game. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I do think we're gonna be able to find a lot of interesting things, uh, a lot of interesting play styles for one-handed Colossal Swords or potentially just two-handed, just incorporating heavy attacks in a meaningful way. Uh, now we're onto KGS here, the Knight's Great Sword, and this was already a great weapon that has true combos between the heavy attack and the light attack, and now that the heavy attack comes out so fast, like, yeah, it's it feels good. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited to play with KGS more. Uh, it just it does a lot of damage with the heavy attack, and you know if you don't finish off your opponent, you can go for that light attack follow up. So really cool stuff there. Um, and here we actually do have one more with the two-handed Nagakibo, which I was just so happy about. Uh, this player, I think it's actually the same player from before, but. Yeah, just heavy attacks, being able to trade. Uh, unfortunately, it was Rakshasa, so we didn't actually break their poise, but, you know, we're still able to actually get our attack out before their attack comes out. And just here, again, being able to whiff punish their Ash of War is phenomenal. So next we're gonna move on to the invasions and I will be trying to swap as much as possible throughout the course of these invasions. Like my inventory really wasn't set up. This was very quick and dirty. I would love to go into, you know, frame data for different weapons and th there's just so much to do, but I wanted to get out some gameplay as early as possible just so people can, you know, kind of see how these weapons play, see some of the big changes and I don't know I think a lot of people just go through and read the patch notes and uh, I don't know if anyone watches more than one video <laughs> of people reading the patch notes so I figure you'll probably watch uh, videos about people reading the patch notes somewhere else and can come here for some nice gameplay um, and also it's be interesting to just see other people's gameplay with this new patch as well so here we can see the two-handed halberd the heavy attack helping us out we're getting it multiple people stunned at the same time it's really useful um reaper also got heavy attack speed buff which is really cool because reaper has just been a lot faster than it was before so having you know all these different attacks that are faster is, is really nice um we do have a bunch of latency with these players sometimes that can happen when you play early in the morning in um na east is you just encounter uh, a lot of latency because you know sometimes you're matching with people from like japan and there's you know uh, a time difference as well as just it takes a long time for your connection to get to them. So we see a lot <laughs> of dagger spam from these two. They were they're pretty into that. Uh, but we are just trying to, you know, not take too much damage. Look out for these jumping heavy attacks with a Moog spear. And where we can go for our heavy attacks, we will definitely try to make that happen. So we do get a nice backstab against this Moog spear player. Um, it is worth noting that the Renala Twin Blade also had a buff. So I believe the heavy attack, the one with the fire, does have hyper armor now I want to say and then the light attack just comes out faster so the blue projectiles that happen with the 
um, Ash of War. Just th those come out pretty fast now, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we are trying to contend with the sleep buildup from these players. The heavy um, thrusting swords. So in the patch notes, it just said thrusting swords, and this has been kind of an issue uh, historically with From Software, where the English translation comes through as heavy thrusting sword and thrusting sword being swapped. And this has actually resulted in some kind of painful nerfs to heavy thrusting sword where people have been asking for changes with thrusting sword and instead they've gotten changes with heavy thrusting sword, which I don't think have really needed all the nerfs that they've gotten. Like the tracking change was probably expected to be on the regular thrusting sword and we got tracking changes that were actually on the heavy thrusting sword. So unfortunate stuff there, but the, the long story short is just that the patch notes say that the heavy attack for thrusting sword was increased when actually it was for heavy thrusting sword. So uh, that's really nice. From what I've heard, you can go for like an R2, R1 and roll out before your opponent can mash, which is really, really cool. Um, and here we're just seeing the utility of the heavy attack as a way to whiff punish. It, it just feels great. Like even against high latency like this, um, just being able to throw out these heavy attacks, get a higher tier of stun, just feels really really good and um yeah i think it really just kind of changes how people can play this game i think we're gonna see great changes in terms of just uh, attack type variety which is really what we want we don't want everyone just relying on l2 and if possible we don't want everyone just relying on l2 and r1 we want everything to just kind of have its place and be useful in different scenarios and for people to understand their weapon really well and utilize the different moveset appropriately and I would say heavy just kind of lacked as as an element of it um, you could obviously get in heavy attacks and I, th I think we'll see some changes too like we're going to be seeing uh, probably some changes to like the colossal sword heavy attack because that that is just so so fast like just too fast um, but the general direction of this patch I think is phenomenal the the kind of understanding that FromSoft has here um, is just better than I think we've seen in some previous patches like this was a change that really helps PvP and I, I think the game in general like this game came out with the expectation that heavy attacks were going to be good and that the imp even for PvE that is like you know the increase to stance damage was an important element of it and to see kind of heavy attacks just um, sit quietly by themselves you know for a while and you know just not not being that useful. Obviously they've been great with the light great sword and stuff, but now they're just so much more viable on everything. So here we can see a nice true combo with the heavy attack into light attack, which was extremely helpful for finishing off this opponent that had such high latency. Um, and we can just see why why this is useful. So this next one is going to be a little bit of a long one where we've got uh, multiple opponents coming in and coming out. We're going to take <laughs> make the bold decision of uh, letting some blues come into the world, but I really just wanted time with these weapons. So here we can see this player going for a great sword heavy attack as uh, a way to just kind of punish my aggression and they're just kind of standing in neutral just waiting for me to get close and throwing that out um, so yeah you know we're seeing it here from other players as well don't know if they're just a heavy attack enjoyer or if they've read the patch notes but it, it is interesting to to see the change in play style and to get punished by it and for things like kgs or the great swords like if they're going for a lot of heavies, you can always jump, so that's an important thing to remember. Now we are able to finish off that player pretty early, and we have some alone time, but we are not able to actually um, flask, which is unfortunate due to <laughs> the wing scythe, but we can just see these uh, these punishes with, with the heavy attack. It comes out so fast, it's so nice. Um, I, I'm super stoked about just the Nagakiba in general, I think two-handed moveset like was already one of my favorite movesets in the game for the Nagakiba and now that the heavy attack is improved I'm just I'm smitten so um, we do kind of let the host just run away and we let a blue come into the world for better or for worse and they're gonna go for some L2s they've got just kind of a variety of things we need to look out for um, seems like a faith type build and they do switch over to a melee moveset going for some heavy attacks which we do like to see here um, and we, so we start jumping unfortunately we get locked on to the host rather than the blue but 
but uh, still, you know, we're, we're doing our thing. We switch over to the power stance moveset, seeing if we can get uh, just, you know, a bunch of burst damage with some of the jumping L1s if possible. We do manage to catch their roll with Unsheath, which is really nice. Uh, here was unfortunate. We jumped over them rather than onto them. And another blue does come into the world, but they're not really going to be a factor. They're just going to be kind of hanging out. And we do really need to wait our turn here. <laughs> There's a lot of things coming our way. Um, this was unfortunate. I really wanted that hefty pot to land and we get punished by um i wanted to call it stars of ruin but um whatever this incantation is that is one of the most annoying ones in the game uh where you just kind of have to run away and take so much uh just like little tiny bits of chip damage we do get estus punished but we get our estus off before the ash of war from the host which is nice we get a nice read on the blue there and punish it with unsheath which I always do enjoy. And here the other blue is AFK, which is fantastic. We love to see that. And here we're actually able to shut down that incantation. So uh, we need to roll out due to the incoming fire from the host, but we've done a lot of damage to the blue. They've definitely uh, burned through a number of flasks and we're well on our way here. We do see more incantations coming in, potentially some healing ones. So we're gonna see if we can get some chip damage with the great bow. Uh, again, like I'd like to just be pressing the R2 button the entire time, but if we're gonna be running invasions, we really do need to uh, kind of incorporate some different elements of the moveset and the build. Uh, we look out for their Ash of War, go for a crouching attack to see if we can just kind of punish that. If they had attacked out of stun, it would have been successful, but they rolled away, so that was the correct move on their part. Um, we do need to look out for the fire again, and this time we finally get the frost pot to connect to punish that incantation, and we begin the chase down here and just a jumping L1 with the power stance Nagakiba's still does a lot of damage. Um, so we're able to finish off that player. And now we can focus on the host here. We're not able to heal due to their Ash of War again, but they're just getting hit by a lot. And we're going for some heavy attacks. And unfortunately, we just have to roll in and grab a backstab. We can't finish them with another heavy attack, but it's GG's. Um, and yeah, that was like a, a definitely a good group of three. And I, yeah, Nagakiba um, is just in a good place. And I, I'm very happy about that. Um, so we're going to switch over to the Sword Lance now. And uh, it was kind of, I don't know, a little bit clumsy for me to just be swapping between, you know, everything because I wanted to have good talismans as well. So uh, I do hope that you'll bear with me as I try to just incorporate lots of different things. But here we have a 2v2 and we go for our true combo with the heavy attack. And yeah, it's just, it feels really consistent on the Sword Lance. It feels really good. And it's it's so nice to be able to land that true combo consistently. Um, I If you've seen my other video where I essentially turn that into a one shot, it is... Um, it's scary to think of where this could be, uh, because, you know, you could definitely one-shot with it before, uh, if you get the full true combo, and now it's just, it's nuts. So, here we're able to get that heavy attack out before their Ash of War completes, and the other red in the world does their job before we're able to switch over to the hand-to-hand -hand moveset. But, um, yeah, that was GG's and a, a good 2v2. And next up we have just a 2v1 here that was, was a little bit silly. Uh, we're going to be using the kind of funny heavy attacks on the Curve Sword. So we have both the Mantis Blade and the Flowing Curve Sword. And yeah, we're just going to be throwing out random heavies, seeing how it feels. I don't really use either of these weapons too often, but I think it's really fun to just kind of give these a try and see, you know, kind of how much forward momentum we have, what types of things we have available. Uh, we do get a nice backstab here, and it's going to take us a long time before we're able to actually finish off this player. Uh, they're at very low health, and they do get their Estus out, and again, we get them very low health. We get one heavy attack in that does a decent amount of damage, and then punish them with a flame strike, uh, but we do just kind of need to follow them around, play Ring Around the Rosy while the PvE throws projectiles here. Um, and now we have some alone time with the host and we can switch over to the Flowing Curve Sword. And they're not really healing, I'm not totally sure why. Um, and before they're able to actually get their heal out, we're able to use our heavy attack, which does do, I believe, 121 poise damage on each of those swings. So it does come out in two swings, that heavy attack. So it's pretty interesting. Um, I would be, I mean, the forward momentum for it is still a little lackluster. And 
the range is also kind of lackluster, but I'll be interested to see kind of how it fits into things and if we see some more funny curved swords just having heavy attacks that are viable. The Mantis Blade I, I have some hopes for as a potentially interesting curved sword. I don't know if it would be top tier meta, but I think you could find some funny, funny things to incorporate with it. Uh, so this next one is going to be another pretty high latency one. We'll be using a HTS here, just uh, seeing if we can enjoy some of the heavy attacks and also just utilize the forward momentum as everyone is running away. Now we do see this player with some nice turn and burn skills and some BHS, which is scary, especially because they've got power stance straight swords, which is just super strong still. Um, we also see the roar coming out from uh, just one of the other phantoms and we get Scarlet Rotted pretty early. So things are not going super well in this invasion between the latency, just the 3v1, the roar. Um, yeah, that was a very, <laughs> very large amount of phantom range in that moment. Um, so this is, this is going to be a pretty sloppy one, but we will be doing our best to just kind of navigate the situation as best we can. Um, here, I don't want to get hit by both hits of the roar. I feel like I'm not confident in my roll timing with the latency, so I just go for a jump. And I think that can be kind of a helpful way to deal with the roar if you are pretty confident that you're going to get hit, because once you're on the ground, you're not going to get hit by the second part. So that's kind of the theory there. Uh, you know, we're trying to make sure we can see where we're going because we're trying to get away and we know we can fall off pretty easily, but we're getting hit by projectiles while we're trying to get out of dodge. So uh, a difficult situation for sure. And we just needed to get rid of the Scarlet Rot. We needed to get our HP topped off. Um, so we're doing our best to kind of get set up here. And ideally we finish off this Phantom with the Power Stance Straight Swords. The fact that one player has a roar and a uh, colossal weapon with hyper armor is just really not ideal. So we're gonna move over to this area. Now we need to be super cognizant of the roar because we could get knocked off the ledge, but it is going to allow us some time alone with some of these other players. We also have BHS in the mix, so using flaming strike is gonna be a great way to catch that, just kind of that lingering hitbox doing us some favors. And here we can see how useful that is. Um, we get our HP back to full and now this player is not healing for some reason. Uh, they do finally go for a heal and we're able to get them right back down to <laughs> very close to death. And while we do eat a lot of fire coils, we're able to hop down behind here. And um, yeah, I don't usually go for a blessing, but this situation just really felt like it called for it. Um, the projectile spam and just just everything, it, it, was, it was difficult to deal with. So um, I wanted to focus again on the heavy attacks, but in this scenario, it felt like potentially the Great Bow is going to be uh, a better option just given everyone's placement. And I believe that spell is actually coming from one of the players, and I'm just so used to that coming from the like Miranda flowers or whatever they are, uh, that I just assumed it was PVE. So here we can just appreciate the delay between that shot landing and <laughs> that player falling down. So yeah, I think the Great Bow was the correct option. Uh, just, yeah, we, we don't want to deal with that level of latency. Um, here we almost run past the host entirely, but we switch over to the martial arts. I was wondering if we'd be able able to knock them off. I think if we had gone for a fully charged palm blast, then perhaps, but really we just wanted to go for neutral R2s to kind of demonstrate the utility of them. And here we're able to just press R2 until they're finished. So that was a, a little bit of a long one and definitely a, a bit of a GG's uh, if you will, but we, uh, we kind of made it work and dealt with the latency and everything. So this next one, again, is not super clean. Just me kind of trying to shoehorn some heavy attacks on different weapons into a situation that didn't really call for it. Um, so we're going to be dealing with some Moonveil in the background and then mostly going for this player that's using a shield. Um, and we're going to have a frustrating time that involves us not being able to actually get our repost after the guard break. So just the, the host, we're, we're ignoring a little bit too much, but we're really focusing on this phantom and using our different heavy attacks. And unfortunately, just the stun that comes with Moonveil is problematic as well as the range like it always has been. And now we do see a second Moonveil coming out from the phantom here. So we're seeing what we can do. If we can throw out some frost pots, get them frostbitten, that could be kind of nice. Uh, we are, you know, focusing on one player getting hit by the other, just kind of standard gank beach scenario with Moonveil, but you know, we, we're having a good time. We have a new patch. Um, hope is not all lost. And finally, we're able to catch up to that phantom and just throw out some running heavies. And here we take out the very special setup. <laughs> we need to remove some armor because just our weight load is, is not correct. But we were again, for science, going to try the storm stomp into heavy attack. And yeah, it seems like it does true combo. So we tested it once. Uh, 
we might want to test it again just just to be sure and yes in fact okay yeah it does uh does true combo so uh we have that we know that now and um if you're at the gank beach you know maybe you'll need to use it again as always if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing i definitely would appreciate it and i hope you have a good day